Good afternoon. Welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills. This is Brock Shimano. Today is Tuesday the 16th, and we had the markets a little bit higher here today. Let's turn right over to the Firetip trading platform, see where we closed off the day. Corn for May delivery trading up 16 and a half. Soybeans trading up 16 and a half. Wheat in Chicago trading up nine and three quarters. Kansas City wheat trading up nine and a quarter. Brock, you know, we had significant selling yesterday. It seems like we're finally getting a little bit of traction. What do you make of it? Yeah, we did see qu quite a sell-off yesterday across some, most of the markets. Uh, the equities were down sharply. S&P and Dow were off. Uh, gold was down sharply. Oil was down. You know, a number of factors were really driving that. Um, the, what happened in Boston was one of the uh, tragic events there that uh, was really driving the markets yesterday. Uh, but really, we just saw a massive sell-off. And today, I just think we see uh, some bargain hunting coming in and some people starting to put a little bit of a bid underneath this market. And really, it flowed over into the grains as well. Like you said, we were up pretty sharply across much of the grain complex here today. We saw funds jumping back in. We saw over 14,000 contracts bought by uh, corn traders here today. So, I, you know, I just think those factors are really pushing the markets up here uh, today. But, you know, Cody, I'm kind of looking at it right now. We've had a nice rally after those reports in late March. Where do you think resistance is going to come in for corn and soybeans here? Well, let's just talk about corn right now. Let's turn right over to this daily candlestick chart. And basically, each one of these bars represents one day with a price activity. And what you're seeing right now, I'm going to zoom in here. What you're seeing right now, this is today's activity. And I think that there's a good chance that we'll see resistance right up, right around this 680 price level. I'm going to draw a line. It's very simple to do here with the Firetip Trading Platform. You just draw a line, and I think that's going to be an area where we see the first amount of resistance. Uh, the first reason why I think that is because it was such a strong support for such a long period of time. Notice we touched on it once, we touched on it twice, we touched on it three times, and each time it was a very strong support level. What we saw is uh, after that uh, March or yeah the March 28th uh, report, we saw acreage and stocks uh, numbers basically drive this market south of that, and I think we're going to see a roll reversal in that support level. It's going to turn into a resistance level. If we go through 680, I think right around that seven dollar that whole mark, we do have a gap that could potentially be filled, uh, and I think that it would be a very strong resistance, uh, probably around. Probably around uh, 696, which is really where we closed off on that Thursday. Uh, if you switch over here to uh, soybeans, you'll notice that we've uh, we've had this kind of downtrend, and I think right around this 1450 level is going to be a strong resistance once again. So I think that's uh, uh, that's what we're going to see in terms of the technical landscape. But of course, the weather has been playing a very large role in the way prices have been moving, uh, particularly the cold weather keeping us out of the fields. Brock, do we see any changes on the horizon? You know, we've really seen that take effect on the spreads too. We were looking at it before the show that. Uh, December uh, to September to December spread has really started to put a, another premium back on the September contract after those reports in late March. We also see it happening with the July to December spread as well. So that's something we're going to definitely have to pay attention to. But if we turn our attention here to the weather, you can see here on this is actual snow depth map. Uh, it's kind of a concern for those upper Midwest areas of North Dakota and Minnesota, South Dakota. Um, there's going to be possible flooding in the Red River Valley that we're going to have to pay attention to as we move further into spring. Uh, so that's something we'll have to keep on our radar. But in the near term, you know, the temperature is really going to be the concern here. Um, it looks like it's going to be much colder than it should be for this time of year. We already know that we're running a little bit behind the five-year average on the corn planting pace. Uh, yesterday's crop progress sh showed us at 2% planted. Normally for this time of year, about 7% planted. And if you Put that in relation to where we were last year. Last year we were 16% planted, so yeah. quite a bit behind where we were last year. Absolutely, and you know when you look at the soil temperature maps that we've uh, taken a look at, you know that uh, you know this year is just we have such a much colder soil temperature uh, than last year, and, and much colder than than average. And, and it's going to be important that we get some warm weather here, but also some dry weather here in the weeks to come. Other than that, uh, you know, not a ton of, uh, of fundamental grain news, not a lot on the export sales or ethanol side of things, uh, but do remember ethanol report will be out tomorrow. But other than that, that wraps up this Tuesday's show. Thanks a lot for joining us. Follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook. Thanks a lot. We'll see you tomorrow.